Whenever the gospel is about the disciples and the story of the disciples, I'm moved because I see myself in the weakness of the disciples. I see myself also in the struggle of the disciples and sometimes in the strengths of the disciples. I want to talk about Thomas. Now, when you hear Thomas the Apostle, probably the first thing that comes to your mind is Doubting Thomas, the title Doubting Thomas. But I think, I really think that that is an unfair title of who Thomas was, because Thomas was a great saint. He was a saint who loved Jesus with all of his heart. He was a brave man. Now, he was, I give you this, he was a pessimist. He was a natural pessimist. That's the way he was built, conditioned, maybe brought up by his family. He was a pessimist. Being a pessimist is not great when you're around people, but it's not a sin, okay? Let's make that clear. So, this guy, Thomas, is sometimes put down and he's seen in a, in a negative light. It's like an offense. You tell someone, you're a doubting Thomas. How I wish, how I wish with all of my heart, I had half, if, if not like one millionth of the faith that Thomas had for Jesus, the love that Thomas had for Jesus, the courage that Thomas had to follow Jesus. You know, just to, at the time when Jesus was telling his disciples that he was about to suffer, and he said, I'm going to Jerusalem. While everyone was say, trying to convince Jesus not to go to Jerusalem and not to suffer, what did Thomas say? say? He told his brother disciples, he said, let's also go to Jerusalem so that we might die with Jesus. Now, some might have seen that as a cynical comment, but if you really look closely at the heart of Thomas, I'm pretty sure that he said this out of courage, that he says, like, I'm gonna stay with you, Jesus. I'm gonna die with you. Now, now, Peter said that as well. He said, I will never deny you. But Peter did, while Thomas didn't. Thomas didn't run away. He didn't escape. He stayed with Jesus. We have no account of him running away. But yet, he put all of his hope and his love in Jesus. And then when Jesus was arrested and died and killed, he was disappointed. The, he imagined the worst. He always imagined the worst as a pessimist, and that what he imagined came true. And he was disappointed. But he made one mistake, one big mistake. And we'll talk about that mistake in just a second. But when all of this happened to, G to Jesus, Thomas grieved alone. Now, some people grieve together. They are happy to cry on the shoulders of others. They're happy to be sad with others. But then there are other people who just like to be alone. When they're going through a difficult moment, just, just leave me alone. Let me grieve alone. Again, it's not a bad thing. But when it becomes bad is when what Thomas did was that he not only grieved alone, but he isolated himself. While the other disciples met and prayed, he decided not to because he was feeling too sad and probably reached a point where he was feeling sorry for himself. Now, Peter as well doubted. He found it really difficult and he went back to his old job. He went fishing, but he still met with the community. And what happened? The gathering community meeting together in the upper room in fear encountered the resurrection. Jesus appears to the gathered community and he tells them, peace be with you. And they all of a sudden are filled with incredible joy and incredible peace. And he breathed on them like God breathed on Adam and gave him life. Like Ezekiel breathed on the dry bones and they came to life. This is what Jesus did to them. But Thomas wasn't there because he isolated himself. Now, this is a mistake we can all make. The pandemic has hit, and many of us are watching Mass online, and uh, we're going through a difficult time. And, but the thing is, when our church is open, we stay online, and we don't gather back in the community. We isolate ourselves, and this is the thing, that we need the community. We need each other. You think you can survive your faith alone, but you cannot. You cannot. It's time and time again in the scriptures. And here, in, in a case in point, 
that Jesus tells the community to gather together, to pray together, to worship together. We need the community to maintain our faith, to grow in our faith. And yes, there's a virtual community. We had the retreat just a week ago, 3,000 people praying together. And I am hearing, nonstop hearing stories about how people have grown in their faith through this Holy Week. And this is the power of community. And virtual community is important. But we need also the sacramental community. We need the Eucharist. We need each other to spur each other on in faith and the community that is there when we're going through moments of doubt. And so what does Thomas do? Thomas, the community reaches out to Thomas and says, hey, we saw the resurrected Christ and they pull him back into the community and there he encounters the risen Christ. His faith is quickened again. His faith comes to life again. But then, yeah, this is good Thomas. Not doubting Thomas, good Thomas. He falls to his knees, and what does he say? He says, my Lord and my God, I love you and I adore you. He's the very first of the apostles, the very first ever person to declare Jesus as his Lord and his God. Wow, how I wish I had the faith that Thomas had. And the sincerity that Thomas had, that he had doubt, and yes, he expressed his doubt. He didn't pretend that everything was okay. He expressed with the community his difficulties, but he didn't stay in his doubt. He sought the Lord. He came back to the community. He fought for this resurrection encounter, and he found it. And then, story says, history says, he went to India, and he proclaimed the gospel in South India, And he converted millions of people as a result. Wow, Lord Jesus, if only in your mercy you make me one millionth of a saint that St. Thomas is. How, what a blessing that would be. I want to love Jesus like Thomas. I want to have faith like Thomas. I want to be with the community like Thomas. And I want to have a heart and a passion to proclaim the gospel of the risen Christ like Thomas. Saint Thomas, pray for us.